Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa bishrahni sadri wa yasir di amri wa ahli nukta min lisani wa quli Alhamdulillah, it's a great honor to have such a respected shaykh from the Masjid of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's one of the senior teachers and just to give you an insight into how the ijazah science works in Islam. So I was asking the shaykh how many people he has in the chain of narration, the chain of ijazah from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to himself because he's got one of the shortest chains. And he said 27 people between him and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this means that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the Qur'an and one of the companions heard it from him. Exactly as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the Qur'an. And then he taught his student and his student and his student. And that chain continues until the Shaykh, mashallah. So inshallah, the Shaykh is going to lead us in an additional two units of prayer, uh, Tarawi, and then he's going to come back and he's going to lead us in the with prayer. So normally we finish around 11 p.m. It's going to probably be an extra half an hour, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, we're going to continue our series on the stories of the prophets. And today we um, go to a different prophet, and a new prophet. And this is Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam was also one of the mightiest prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like all of the prophets, he had one task. Inni lakum nadirun mubin. That he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a warner. And Nuh alayhi salam was sent to a people who had diverted from the fitrah, who had diverted from the fitrah of Tawheed to the depths of shirk. And how did these people worship idols? How did the story start? There was a group of people, they lived in the community and they were pious, righteous people. When they passed away, when they passed away, Shaitan inspired the people after them to create statues of them. So we hear the words in the Quran, Wadda, Swa'a, Yahuth, Ya'uq, Nasr. These were the five righteous people. When they passed away, Shaitan, he inspired the people that look, you're missing your righteous people who remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And according to one narration by Ibn Abi Hatim, he says that Shaitan came in the form of a man to the people when Wadda passed away. And after they had buried him, he said to them, do you, do you not miss this great personality amongst you? How about if I created a statue to be amongst you in your meetings and your gatherings? And they said, okay, this is fine. And then after some time, he said, you know, this statue, it's only in one place. What about if I create many statues so you can start taking them in your households? And the people, they again, they accepted. But the people at the time, they did not worship the statues. They used to venerate and honor the uh, person who had passed away. But then the people that came after them, their children and their grandchildren, they didn't understand the concept of the statue. And they said, you know, we saw our forefathers worshiping them. And this is where shirk, the greatest sin in Islam, started. And Nuh alayhi salam, he was sent to these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا That Nuh alayhi salam was sent to the people for 1,000 minus 50 years. 950 years of da'wah. According to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what did Nuh alayhi salam say? He said, Oh Allah, I called them in the darkness of the night, Layla wa Nahara, during the night, during the day. But every single time, when I called them, Firara, they started running away from me. And when I called them, they used to plug their hands into their ears. They used to get their jackets and cover their faces. And he said, I used to call them in private and public. And this is one lesson I want you all to take away from this. That when you are a da'i, when you are calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to be patient. Not everybody is on the same wavelength. We see the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he gave da'wah to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, straight away he accepted. In the case of Umar ibn al-Khattab, who became one of the greatest khalif, he was on his way to na'udhu billah, kill the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So people are on different wavelengths. If somebody has a hatred for Islam, in your few minutes of giving da'wah to the person, 
they're not going to straight away become Muslim. It's going to be very difficult because they have a hatred. That hatred needs to be diluted. Nuh alayhi salam was giving da'wah for a period of 950 years. Can you imagine? After a period of 950 people, only a handful of people accepted his da'wah. The elite, the people who were rich, the people who were showing themselves off in society, they were not interested. And they used to mock Nuh alayhi salam. So this is part of the da'wah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi salam. We know when he went to Ta'if, he was turned away by the kings. We know the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam struggled in his da'wah in Makkah al-Mukarrama, where the Muslims were being persecuted. Why? Because of what they used to believe in. So this is a technique in da'wah that we need to be patient. When Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam was calling his uncle to Islam, Abu Jahal comes and he starts whispering from the back. Oh Abu Talib, are you really going to listen to your nephew? What about your forefathers? You need to die on the religion of your forefathers. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is patient and he's telling his uncle, Oh uncle, just say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulullah. I'll use these statements in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Deep down in his heart, uh, the uncle of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi he thought about Islam, but he died on kufr. And the Prophet, this really grieved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And even in the Quran from the story of Nuh alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoles the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa That look, Nuh alayhi salam was giving da'wah for a period of 950 years. Can we imagine? Our lifespan is 60 to 70. Some live more, some live less. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had to be patient in the da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you do not guide whom you will, I guide whom I wish. So we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to act upon what's been said.